Well, Fred McMurray is testifying before Congress today. If you're not old enough to remember, he was dad in my three sons. Uh, well, Senator, I th you know, it, 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 I kept waiting for the 1950s sitcom music. Uh, Neil Gorsuch is such a, uh, he's so, so dramatic. And he's so, it's, it, it was like a bad soap opera from the 1960s. And, you know, Senator, I would never talk about that. I would, you know, if the president asked me if I would ban Roe v. Wade or if I would if overturn Roe v. Wade, I would walk out of the room. Right. This is a guy who has basically spent his entire career. Well, Elizabeth Warren said it very well. The senator from Massachusetts said uh, Gorsuch has shown a remarkable ability to shape and reshape legal arguments in ways that benefit large corporations and disadvantage ordinary people seeking justice, repeatedly citing with the rights of corporations over women, consumers, and workers. Pat Leahy this morning asked him, you know, uh, you know, you, you say that you're an original, I'm paraphrasing here from memory, but it is pretty close. He said, you say that you're an originalist, that you want to interpret the Constitution in the context of the meaning of the founders. So do you really believe that James Madison and, and company, when, when these guys were sitting down to write the First Amendment, and they wrote about free speech, that they intended for that free speech to mean large corporations using their money to affect political outcomes? Do you really believe that? Gorsuch never answered the question. He was like, well, you know, the people and interpretations and, you know, history and uh, stare decisis and maybe, maybe not. It's just, he didn't answer the question. Because he's on the record standing with Citizens United saying, yeah, it's, it's all about, it's all about corporate power. It's all about billionaires being able to buy politicians. Isn't it a fine thing? Gorsuch has consistently been anti-worker anti-consumer, anti-woman, and pro-corporate. The anti-woman gets pretty bizarre. This was, uh, Diane Feinstein pointed this out. Uh, she said that Gorsuch said that many women abuse maternity benefits. Thus, he reasoned it is legal for a future employer to ask female interviewees about their pregnancy and family plans in order to, quote, protect themselves, as Attorney Jennifer Sisk put it, against their female employees. Ari Berman of The Nation, a lawyer himself, uh, highlights Gorsuch's praise of Hans von Spakovsky. Now, if you don't know who Hans von Spakovsky, Spakovsky was a guy who was in the Bush administration, and he is the leading proponent in the United States of the contemporary version of birtherism, right? Birtherism was this theory that, 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 uh, that Barack Obama was not born in the United States, that he was a secret Muslim, he was a secret uh, uh, Kenyan, that he was, uh, well, Jerry Corsi, you know, if, if from, you know, kind of the, the Breitbart end of the spectrum, Jerome Corsi, a guest on this program many times, even alleged that Barack Obama was a gay Muslim. Okay, so, you know, the, the, uh, the variation on that, with you know, take out the Muslim and all that stuff. The variation on that, the new, the new, oh my God, theory. You know, the you know, our hair is on fire. It used to be, oh my God, we've got to impeach the president because he's actually a Trojan horse. He's actually, you know, he's he's. Uh, we're talking about Obama here. That that President Obama was actually, you know, working on behalf of well, the terrorists. I mean, you know, Donald Trump said that Barack Obama started ISIS. So the contemporary version of that is that there are people all over the United States who are not eligible to vote, who are showing up by the millions to vote. And most of them have last names like Gonzalez, and most of them have, have darker skin than your average European Caucasian, and, uh, you know, most of them speak Spanish. They, you know, they don't even try to strip the racism out of this, you know? And it's so funny because, you know, of the people who've actually been busted for in-person voter fraud, 
almost all of them have been vote have been busted for voting Republican. And one of the more high-profile busts last year was, uh, you know, a, an Austrian down in Florida who voted for Trump. But Hans von Spakovsky is the guy who has been doing the sales pitch that there's voter fraud, right, which is equally BS as was, you know, Obama wasn't born in the United States. It's, it's another fraud from the Republicans to try to, you know, stir stuff up. Well, Gorsuch loves Hans von Spakovsky. He says, uh, uh, Ari Berman says that Spakovsky has been instrumental in spreading the myth of widespread voter fraud and backing new restrictions to make it harder to vote. So you want to make it harder to vote? Put this guy in the Supreme Court. He was Bush, one of Bush's lawyers defending torture. You want us to go back to torturing people? When he was asked, would you, would you uh, reinstate waterboarding? He said, you bet your ass I would. 115 civil and human rights organizations sent a letter to the Senate last Friday objecting to Gorsuch. 115 organizations. You can't get 115 civil rights organizations to agree on almost anything. This guy is over the top. And in my opinion, and I'd I'm, I'm love to hear your opinion, you know, lines are open, as they say in radio. Um, but in my opinion, the Democrats in the Senate should say, you know, for the last year of uh, President Obama's term, you guys said eight judges on the court. That's not a crisis. You got 114 other judicial openings that you refused to fill to allow President Obama to fill that now Trump can do. And you just, you know, the Republicans thought, hey, you know, having a half staffed or quarter, you know, quarter down or whatever it may be, federal judiciary, no big deal. Eight people on the Supreme Court, how many people does it take to make a decision? If you're not really all that concerned, if you're so not concerned about the makeup of the Supreme Court and, and their ability to reach decisions and things like that, if you're really not all that concerned about it, if you're so not concerned about it that you would, you would, uh, not even meet with Merrick Garland, not even meet with him, not hold a hearing, not hold nothing. If you're so concerned that it's just no big deal, or if you're so convinced that it's just no big deal, then let's just leave it. We have three and a half years. We can do eight judges, eight justices on the Supreme Court for three and a half years. I guarantee you the next president's going to be a Democrat. There is no way that the American people, I mean, just look at some of the bat guano crazy stuff that these guys are doing. You've got the, uh, the architect of the federal fracking loophole. His name is Bill Cooper. He's currently a, uh, a congressional staffer, was a lobbyist for the fossil fuel industry. He's a lawyer. Trump wants to make him in charge of the White House Council on Environmental Quality. The guy who wrote the fracking loophole. You got Mick Mulvaney, the, the uh, Trump budget director. This is the guy who says, you know, oh, hey, you know we, 20 million people being thrown off health care. No, no problem. So, you know, Mulvaney was being interviewed by CBS on Sunday in the Face, to, face the Nation. And uh, John Dickerson was interviewing him. And John Dickerson said, let me ask you a question. Do you really think of Social Security disability insurance as part of pe what people think of when they think of Social Security? I don't think so. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. Dickerson just asked the question. He said, what might it, what, but he, you know, here's, here's the, uh, Dickerson said, would you be uh, open to cutting entitlements? And Mulvaney replies, let me ask you a question. Do you really think that Social Security disability insurance is part of what people think of when they think of Social Security? I don't think so. 
He has a grin on his face. He says it's the fastest growing program. It was it grew tremendously under President Obama. It's a very wasteful program, and we want to try to fix that. So security disability insurance is a, between a quarter and a third of Social Security. It's $143 billion we spent in 2015, the last year that we have numbers for. And there, you know, there's a fund for it and all that kind of stuff. But Mick, when you, Mick Mulvaney comes out and says, yeah, we're going to cut Social Security, no problem. We'll just, we'll start with the disability fund. Ryan Care, this, you know, this, this Ryan Care thing, the president went down to the White House, or down to Congress this morning. In fact, Louise and I got caught in the traffic jam around his, uh, his motorcade. And, you know, he went down to the, to the Capitol building this morning and threatened Republican members of Congress, saying, I'm going to come after you if they don't vote to destroy the health insurance of 20 million Americans. He thinks it's going to win. He goes to Kentucky to a bunch of clueless Fox News watching Trump donors and says, you know, yeah, we got to cut, we got to cut Obamacare. And they're all, all they watch is Fox. They have no idea what he's talking about. They have no idea that he's put his sights on their backs and on their foreheads. But I'm telling you, if this passes, they will figure it out. And the next president will be a Democrat. And the House and Senate will flip Democratic. And Mr. Gorsuch and Mr. Anschutz, his billionaire patron, can just sit on the sidelines for three and a half years.